Hi, this is Dana Davidson, Associate Director of the Academic Support Center, and I'm going to take a few moments to tell you about updates to version 7 of the TEAS exam. So what exactly has changed from version 6 to version 7? The test actually changed on June 3rd, 2022. The total number of questions is the same. It's still 170. The difference is the distribution of the questions within each subtest. And on the next slide, we're going to look at a breakdown of that in a lot more detail. There have also been additional types of questions added, not just multiple choice. And the subsequent slides are also going to look at that in more detail. What's important to remember is the actual content of the test remains the same from version six. So the workshops that the ASC and the Writing Center created that are available within this info guide are still relevant and they're still helpful. So please look at all of those subtest workshop videos and you're gonna get a lot of great information to help you get a better score on the test. Okay, here is that in-depth breakdown I was telling you about. If this goes too quick, you can pause at this screen and take a much closer look. Again, if you add up the total of number of questions here, it will be 170. Total number of questions here, still 170. But you notice there's been a change. For instance, reading, there are now fewer questions. Math, there are two additional questions. Science has three fewer questions, and English and language usage now has more questions. And then within this, you can see exact breakdowns of the types of questions within each subtest. The main difference between version six and seven of the T's involves the types of questions. Version six of the exam featured only multiple choice questions. However, version seven is in going to incorporate other types of questions as well. These are the four different types of questions in addition to multiple choice questions. I'm gonna dedicate a slide to each of these to explain those question types. Multiple select questions provide four or more answer choices and more than one may be correct. Now we know our traditional multiple choice test usually only have one correct answer. So this is a difference. In this case, you're gonna be asked to select all that apply or all that are correct. If you select any incorrect answer choice and or you do not select all of the correct choices, that question will be scored as incorrect you will not get partial credit. So let's say out of your six choices, three of them are correct. You choose two of them that are correct, but you forget the third one. In that case, the whole question will be incorrect because you do not get partial credit. A good strategy is to just treat each answer as an individual true-false question. So if I were doing it, I would look at each one, read it to myself and say, is that true or false? Then I'd go to the next one. Is that true or false? Go to the next one, etc. And I'd ask myself that question for each and every one. And then if I got true answers, I would mark each of those. Make sure you read each answer choice carefully and make sure you're reading what it is asking you for. What is the criteria that's given to you in the question? Supply answer. This type of question does not provide you any answer choices. Instead, you will be asked to fill in the blank. A good strategy is to reread the entire sentence with your answer included to be sure your answer makes sense before moving on. Hotspot questions. These provide an image containing two to five clickable areas. You must click on the area or areas of the image that correctly answer the question. 
So I'm thinking in my mind it might be a diagram of, say, a heart and the different areas of the heart, and it might want you to click everywhere on that image that would answer the question correctly. Make sure you reread the directions so you understand exactly what they're asking for and what they're asking you to click on. And look closely at your options before you click anything. If you quickly skim your choices, you may miss something. So just be sure how you want to answer before you click on anything in the diagram. Ordered response questions require you to correctly order a set of given responses. Each question provides between four and six responses. So think of this as maybe a some kind of scientific process and you'll need to know the order in which steps happen. You're gonna have options on the left that you're gonna have to drag over to the right in the correct order. So you'll be using your mouse, taking them from the left, dragging them and dropping them to the right so that they're in the correct order. If any response is out of order, the entire question is scored as incorrect. No partial credit is given. Once you have placed the options in order, review them again before clicking Submit. 